You caught your dog doing the booty scoot on your favorite carpet, leaving an awful fishy metallic smell in the room. Why is he doing this? And how can this be stopped? Your dog may be suffering from an anal gland disorder. Watch this video to find out exactly what anal glands in dogs are and what the causes, clinical signs, diagnosis, treatment and prevention methods are so that you can help your dog to stop embarrassing you in front of your guest at home and quite literally relieve this pain in the butt situation that your doggo might find himself in. Hey guys, Dr. Peter. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. Now, while anal glands are probably the last part of your dog's anatomy that you would really want to investigate, anal gland disorders are very common in dogs and can lead to severe problems if left untreated. So what are these anal glands that you speak about? The anal glands, also called anal sacs, are two small pouches located on either side of the anus at approximately the 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock positions when imagining the anus to be a clock. The walls of the sac are lined with a large number of sweat glands that produce a foul smelling watery whirly kind of fluid mostly being described as smelling like rotten fish. The fluid is stored in the anal sacs and is released through a small duct or canal that opens just inside the rectum. So why do dogs and cats have anal glands? The anal gland secretion contains chemicals that act as territorial markers and contain information such as their age, sex, breed, address, degree and phone number. <laughs> Just kidding, dogs don't go to university. This anal sac juice is usually squeezed out by muscular contractions whenever the dog passes a bowel movement, aka when they poop. And this provides a distinctive odor or individual scent signature, if you will, to the dog's feces. This is why dogs smell each other's butts and feces when meeting for the first time, as this gives them a lot of information as to who the other dog is. Imagine if this is how people got to know each other. Hmm. So why can anal glands sometimes cause problems in dogs? The anal glands can sometimes become impacted or plugged, usually due to inflammation of the ducts. The secretion within the impacted sacs will then start to thicken and will cause the sacs to become swollen and distended. This is painful and uncomfortable and may prevent your dog from passing feces. The secreted material within the anal glands is an ideal medium for bacterial growth and bacteria that are normally present in the feces can readily travel up the ducts and enter the anal sacs. Now, under normal circumstances, the bacteria will be flushed out when the secretions are expelled during a normal bowel movement. But if the sacs are impacted and the dog is too painful to defecate, then the fluid will not empty normally and this is when they get infected. The fluid then becomes bloody and eventually the anal glands become filled with pus forming an anal sac abscess. This abscess will appear as a painful red hot swelling on one or both sides of the anus and if left for too long the abscess will become bigger and bigger and eventually it will burst open releasing greenish, yellow or bloody pus. If this is left untreated, the infection can quickly spread and cause severe damage to the anus and the rectum. Now the first clinical sign that you will probably notice is that your dog will begin scooting, which means he will drag his bum on the floor as if he's trying to scratch an itch. He may also show discomfort and sometimes even cry out in pain when trying to defecate. He may start chasing his tail, you might lick or bite at the area around the base of the tail. And if you have a proper look, you may also notice a foul, fishy type of discharge coming from the anal glands. If this is an anal gland abscess that burst open, you will also notice dark brown discolored blood staining the hair around the anus and the hair around the anal region will generally become matted as well. And as you can probably imagine, anal sac disease is very painful. Even dogs that are normally gentle and calm may growl or snap 
when touch around the tail or anus when they have anal sac disease. Now, we are not exactly sure what the exact cause of anal gland impaction in dogs is. Some dogs just have a genetic conformational predisposition where the ligaments that hold the anal glands in place are lax, therefore impairing the normal process of expelling the anal juice. And other potential causes may include food allergies, inflammatory bowel disease, recent bouts of diarrhea, constipation, excessive glandular secretions, and even anal gland tumors. Obese dogs have a poor muscle tone and excess body fat in the anal region, which lessens the pressure that passing feces apply to the glands, which can lead to a higher occurrence of the disease. Small and toy sized dog breeds, such as poodles, chihuahuas, and bassets, are predisposed to developing this condition, but dogs of any age and either sex can be affected. Guys, if you found any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you can just bark at the like button so that the YouTube algorithm can show this video to more people. Okay, so the diagnosis of anal gland disorders is rather straightforward. Apart from obtaining a thorough history and performing a proper clinical exam, your vet will first take a look at the dog's anal region to detect any signs of possible injury, such as open sores, swelling, or red-brown exudate coming from the anal glands, and if this is the case, then an anal gland abscess rupture will be diagnosed. If there are no obvious signs of injury, the vet will put on his glove, apply some loop to his finger, and then perform a rectal exam. Enlarged anal glands is quite easy to detect via this route, as they will both feel similar to the size of a pea or a small grape. Sometimes, if the anal glands are very big, you can even see them when looking from the outside, as they will both display as oval swellings just below the anal opening. Now, normal anal gland juice will typically have a clear or pale yellow-brown appearance, whilst impacted anal glands will contain more of a thick, pasty brown secretion, almost like peanut butter, that is difficult to express. Yes, I am aware that I just ruined your PB&J lunch. Your vet may also opt to evaluate some of the anal gland content under a microscope to look for signs of infection and if the tumor is suspected, ultrasonography or a biopsy may be needed for a proper diagnosis. Now, depending on the consistency, color and difficulty involved in expressing the anal glands, your vet will decide on an appropriate treatment plan. If the anal sacs were full but the material was normal and easily expressed, your vet will empty both anal glands completely via digital rectal expression. The content will usually come out as a thin kind of like ribbon effect. If the anal glands were very full, difficult to express and painful to the dog, then it would be more humane to give a light sedation and then proceed to empty out the anal glands properly. It can cause a lot of damage to the anal region if your dog is trying to get away or if he moves around a lot while the vet's finger is in this bum. So in these cases, sedation might be needed to get the job done. Your vet may also prescribe a short course of anti-inflammatories afterwards if the procedure was deemed to be painful to the dog. If your dog suffers from an anal gland abscess that is still intact, your vet may decide to lance the abscess and treat it the same way as he would a ruptured abscess. For this procedure, the dog will definitely need to be sedated as this is very painful. And then the anal gland will be cleaned and flushed to remove any of the solidified material and to allow proper drainage. Antibiotics such as clindamycin will usually be infused into the injured area and the dog will be put on a course of anti-inflammatories such as meloxicam for pain and systemic antibiotics if the infection was severe. Now, some dogs do unfortunately suffer from chronic anal sac infection which means that the anal glands repeatedly becomes blocked, leading to infection and discomfort. Each impaction may cause further scarring and narrowing of the ducts, leading to reoccurrences that are even more frequent. In these cases, it is a good idea to bring these doggers into the vet clinic once every one to three months to have their anal glands routinely expressed before it becomes a problem. If your dog has a severe problem with his anal glands, and the routine expression does not seem to work or your dog suffers from an anal gland tumor, 
then your vet may recommend a more permanent solution, which would be to remove the affected anal sac surgically. This will not have any adverse effects on your pet, as domesticated dogs do not really need to mark the territory as much as they once did in the wild. Surgical remover is, however, a very delicate and specialized procedure, and your dog may be referred to a board-certified veterinary surgeon. And the reason for this is that the nerves that control the anal sphincter, which are the muscles that open and close the rectum, runs through the soft tissue nearby the anal sac. So great care and a proper understanding of the anatomy around the anal region must be held before attempting to remove these sacs, as if done incorrectly, the surgery can actually damage these nerves, which may lead to the dog having fecal incontinence meaning that there will be a constant leakage of feces from the dog's anus. Now, it is common for some dogs to release the anal gland content when frightened, and others may appear to lack control of the anus or anal sac ducts, which will lead to small quantities of fluid draining out when they are resting. And this will leave an unpleasant, lingering odor in your home. If your dog has this problem, it is not his fault and you may need to decide to have it surgically removed as well. Some dogs, such as German Shepherds, are also prone to develop abnormal openings in the anal sacs, called anal fistulas, which causes severe pain and discomfort. These dogs will need a proper clinical workup, as this condition is mostly related to skin allergies, and I will need to make another separate video on this topic, as there's also quite a lot to cover. If your dog is constantly licking at his anus even after the treatment, then you may need to apply an Elizabethan collar and apply it for at least seven days in order to prevent the dog from reaching its anus. If you notice that the anal glands continue to drain after a few days of treatment, or if they appear to be red and swollen, then take your dog back to the vet for follow-up to make sure to check for any complications. Now, it is always, always, a good idea to keep your dog on a good quality commercial diet such as Yields ID so that they are producing healthy stool and to make sure that they have plenty of exercise in order to prevent obesity. If your vet identified an underlying health condition such as a skin allergy, work with him to try and manage it. In general, a dog's anal glands do not need to be manually expressed unless there is a problem. Excessive expression can actually damage the anal glands and cause scar tissue which might prevent them to empty themselves in the future. All the dogs can develop cancer of the glands within the anal sacs called anal gland adenocarcinoma, which is quite a serious type of cancer. Therefore, it is very important to have your dog examined by a veterinarian as soon as you see any of the clinical signs mentioned earlier. While it is not a pleasant thing to think about, anal gland problems are common enough that it pays to be vigilant in watching out for them. Your doggo may not be able to thank you in words, but they will, and nevertheless, be sure to appreciate the relief that you can provide. Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you found it to be helpful, again, I would really appreciate it if you can bark at the like button and click on subscribe to join our international family of responsible pet ownership. And if you are new to my channel, then welcome and let me know down in comments if you have any questions or concerns and I will try my best to get back to you. Anyways guys, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.